this staged approach. Uh, and the reason for that is it is very common for people to have a, a hair sample food intolerance test or the, uh, other types of food intolerance tests. And it comes back with 60 things. And people go, oh, I don't even know where to start. And so my personal experience of this was I had about 30 food intolerances um, and a couple of actual allergies. So just as a reminder, a food intolerance is something that will give a very low level uh, sort of inflammatory response, headaches, IBS, constipational diarrhea, uh, sort of joint pain, um, mucus in the sinuses. I mean, the list is endless. For more information, if you haven't checked out our food intolerance talk, definitely check that out. Uh, so food intolerances, an allergy is, it, it is something that will happen immediately. You get it on your skin, you have an allergy, you know, you breathe in the peanut, people have an anaphylactic shock. So it, they're, they're, they're quick, they're quick responses. Food intolerances can turn into allergies. Uh, they don't always. In fact, it is, it is fairly rare, but it can happen. Um, and allergies can eventually, uh, when we're actually eating the right food strategy and looking after our body and we have um, removed too much stress from the immune system, uh, food allergies can even uh, actually reduce down to an intolerance. And in some cases, in some cases, not even anything, which is, I think, fairly miraculous. Not that I would ever be saying that to a client, but it's like, it is amazing when you start giving the body what it needs and you take away what it can't use, how much it changes its response. Now, the reason is that, so very commonly, so uh, just gonna use my example, my example of me as an illustration purpose for illustration purposes. So I had 30 different food intolerances. And I mean, it was horrendous. Skin outbreaks, um, migraines, IBS, they were they were the main sort of issues that I was experiencing. And these like massively ramped up uh, uh, during pregnancy because some of the hormones were really on. So there was just so many food I couldn't eat. And then there's the list of stuff that they tell you you can't eat when you're pregnant. It was ridiculous. Just didn't go out to it. It was ridiculous. But the one thing I could always, always eat and my body didn't have a reaction to was wheat. I could have a bit of toast or I could have a bit of toast or a little glass of milk and have those. Now, what's interesting, when you actually start looking at the body's response to food, we pretty much wean our children on rusks. We wean them on grains. We wean them on wheat. We wean them on milk. So the body becomes so used to dealing with this, this thing that it's actually can be very, very intolerant to, that it starts reacting to other things. It's actually something called, a, uh, in the case of the wheat, the, a, a gluten cross sensitivity reaction. But because actually what the, the true intolerance is, is usually the first step we look at is wheat and milk. It's actually just a very destabilized immune system that is already in this heightened state of stress that is now just reacting. And, and kind of going a bit a bit nuts or is that not till stage four haha -ha. <laughs> so very often when we actually remove wheat and milk from the diet it's like a house of cards and everything starts falling down and the body actually goes okay I can see the wood for the trees and now I can actually work out what I'm truly intolerant to so we call them gateway allergens so it might be that they don't get a response. Oh, no, no, I'm fine with milk. Oh, no, 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 I'm fine with wheat. They're actually not once they take it out their diet. If they take it out their diet for two weeks and they go back to it, that's when you see them within 20 minutes, bent over double, you know, in pain with their digestion. They're talking about having got a headache literally within an hour of eating the thing. Whatever it is, they actually, the body can then start to give them a clearer signal. So we start with the gateway allergens and it can take, you know, I always say to someone, you're going to know in a couple of weeks, but I'll give it a month of not eating those gateway allergens. Then the immune system starts to change. It actually takes six months for it to re-regulate, for the antibodies in your immune system to regulate. So we're not talking about an overnight thing. But after that, then someone will come back and they'll go, oh, God, do you know what? I've noticed that I just feel like I'm not eating the wheat and I'm, I'm fine, but I'm, wow, do I feel bloated and a bit farty after potatoes? Really common. And you go, ah, that's because in the second 
layer, we're now looking at grains, varying grains. So I always say to someone, okay, let's just start by removing the wheat, but we can carry on with rye, barley, spelt, see what happens. Let's carry on, let's take away the milk, but, but let's carry on with cheese or yogurt. And then let's see what happens because if they're eating milk, you know, some people are having it for breakfast, they're having six, seven teas and coffees in a day. They, they might be having an exposure to milk seven, eight, nine times in a day. And every single time we have one of these things, it's like we're having a hit of arsenic. So we're having this major immune reaction like throughout the day. So when we remove that, then we get a clearer response to the things we are actually intolerant to. So it might be that then you can start to look at potatoes. Potatoes is really common and annoyingly, it's in a lot of gluten-free bread. So, but what's good about that is it then shows itself up quite quickly. Um, so nightshades is a really, really common one. And again, checking out food intolerance talk, deadly nightshades, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Then we can start to look at eggs. So what if they're kind of like, okay, now I've removed grains, dairy, nightshades, still something not right. Okay, now I'm going to look at eggs. Uh, and it very often could be egg whites rather than the yolks that people have a problem with. And then we would move on to the beans, legumes, nuts and seeds. And eventually we then move on to the allium. So if you've got someone who's been, you know, kind of eating in a really balanced way, using some strategies that, you know, that, that educated them on, recommended and educated them on. And they're going, oh, no, I feel so much better in many ways. But then I'm just eating something with like loads of garlic and I'm bent over double. You're like, OK, allium. Now, this food intolerance hierarchy there's a lot of research that's gone into it. We haven't just picked them out of thin air. This is actually based on a combination of the autoimmune protocol and FODMAPs and also a load of other research. But we prefer to go in with this staged approach primarily because taking away all of these foods in one go is really distressing. And I'm a big fan of making every single, you know, step that we coach someone on achievable. So taking away wheat and milk for some people is huge. It's a major, major deal. It's like it's all they can think about. Take away all grains, all dairy, all nightshades, all the too much. So let's go step by step. I would also prefer to, I would also really much prefer to go to tread gently and then maybe they're actually okay with spelt and rye and they're okay with cheese. They're not so great with yogurt, but they can handle some aubergine, but they just can't handle the rest of them. Or they can handle some tomato, but they're not great with the rest of the nightshade. And then they're okay with egg yolks. And there's a few nuts they're great with. And actually the alliums don't bother them. Now what we've done is we have created a targeted biochemically individual approach to somebody's diet rather than this blanket sweeping, right, well, we're just going to eliminate all of this. And so we go slowly. And yeah, this could take six months to work through. But then that person has got clear information and they are really empowered to make choices moving forwards rather than, oh, I, oh, I can't go out to eat because look, it's all got that in it. So that's why we work with the staged approach partially because of the empowerment perspective for the client, but also because it gives the immune system time to really settle itself down and then be able to give you the clear messages when it's not happy.